uh, the commentary in uh, in Romania would look something like that. I think you are shared. You are seeing it. It's uh, a commentary that uh, compares to very well-known uh, translation in Romanian, and um, then discusses the text with a few explanations that also use the Greek text. So more or less, the commentary page looks like uh, this uh, that you have uh, in front of you. I won't stay very long with this uh, image since not everybody knows Romanian. Uh, so, <laughs> so I will stop sharing this and uh, I will go to a, a passage that is part from uh, Paul's epistle to Ephesians and this passage uh, we can find in um, Ephesians chapter 6 and um, for in order that everybody could follow it, I will uh, read it from the new RSV, new revised standard version in English. It's a short passage about our need for God's equipment or our need for God's armor in the trials of uh, our lives. The passage is Ephesians 6 from verse 13 to verse 17. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness as shoes for your feet put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all this, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Um, I stop this uh, image of the text. I hope that everybody uh, was able somehow to follow my kind of English pronunciation and uh, read the text anyway. It was uh, provided in the written form as well. I would like to invite you uh, to think at the fact that during this time when we are troubled by the coronavirus presence and problems, by the economical problems, be it United States or Romania or England or any, anywhere almost, uh, or China, <sighs> um, we need the armor of God. Because regardless the way you look at it, it is a sort of attack, a biological attack if you want, a spiritual attack, a psychological attack. Uh, we might be worried about our health, but we might be worried about our rights as Christians. We don't know exactly what's going on in the long term in society, but in such times, if this is an attack of sorts, any sorts, then we need the armor of God. Of course, the text is making us aware that God's word is inviting us to put on, to take up the whole armor of God. Of course, that was something that would make sense for a first century reader who would see quite often a Roman soldier around and with would admire the, the armor they had. We have a different type of armor to be sure. Our soldiers are dressed and equipped differently, but um, the symbols and the main actions of the Roman uh, armor are still uh, valid for us. So I will go to each of them as the text went. Uh, we need the, the armor of God because we, are, we need to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. So uh, there is a lot of discussion going on about uh, what is the, the evil day. Some um, fathers of the church like Victorinus are saying that uh, the evil day is the day when we are tempted by anything, announced or unannounced. But others say it's the great tribulation at the end of history. That is the actually most evil day. I don't know exactly how the things are, but anyway, regardless 
regardless the temptation and the great trial, we need to get victorious and to stay victorious. So it's not enough to get to win the victory. We need to stay victorious and face the difficulties after uh, we got the victory. Um, great athletes and uh, sportsmen say us that it's not so difficult to get at the top of the list and and uh, of performances, but it's very difficult to stay there once you reach the top. So this is actually why we need the arm of God to get victorious against temptations, against sin, against trials in our lives and to stay there. And uh, that's something I need and I think that you also need. In order to stay victorious, uh, we are being told that we need a belt of truth and that's a very useful piece of uh, equipment. It will um, help you keep your back straight and be able to lift great uh, weights, but also keep with you smaller weaponry at hand. It's very useful. Uh, we need a strong foundation and a good posture, posture in life. No active soldier would, be, would allow himself a, a bad pos posture in life, a bad position. We need a breastplate of righteousness. The righteousness is the righteousness of Christ. And the breastplate is uh, shielding our body from the threatening blows uh, that could come from outside, that could uh, uh, endanger our heart, stomach, intestines. That's about the real armor. But in terms of spiritual life, we could be attacked by, by um, means from outside that would affect our heart, our feelings. Our, you know, even in English, when you say something, is, uh, somebody is courageous, you say uh, he's got guts or strong guts. Well, this is why we, we need breastplates so that uh, any spiritual attacks against our courage, against our balance, may uh, not be successful. We need the breastplate of righteousness and the righteousness we have is the one Christ has uh, won for us and he's sharing with us. He's won for us. He's won it for us on the cross when he died for our sins and he's sharing it with us. Of course, uh, what we need, and I think we need it in our um, struggle against the coronavirus uh, type of uh, fear and spirituality is to have uh, a very strong grip with wearing uh, the shoes of the gospel of peace. We should not allow ourselves to lose the grip on reality. The reality, whatever the medical reality or social or economic reality is, the Standing reality is that people need to be renewed spiritually, healed inwardly, put in a right relationship with God. We need the shoes of the zeal for the gospel of peace. That's a perspective we, un we cannot allow ourselves to lose. Uh, of course, you know all these uh, pieces of uh, armory and um, further we uh, find that we need the shield of faith, uh, that will um, uh, shield us from uh, worries, strifes, uh, quarrels, and uh, things that could uh, attack the fabric of our um, spiritual being. We need the helmet of salvation, and this is shielding our head. I like this piece of armory so much because the helmet of, of salvation or our faith in Christ's salvation, it's act, acting like a helmet. And sometimes maybe our thoughts are being affected. What is going on? What will happen with my life? What will happen with my career? What will happen with my children? Is there any hope? And God's message for us is, yes. This is what salvation is about. Creating hope where there was none. So we need the helmet that uh, keeps and shields our heads and our thinking, the helmet of salvation. And uh, of course, uh, we need a sword of um, 
the spirit, and this sword is um, uh, a Roman sword, in the way Paul is presenting God's armor here. The Roman sword is not exactly what we have now in picture. This looks like an English uh, medieval sword. Uh, the Roman sword was rather short, maybe half of the, the one we have in the picture. And it was very good, extremely good in close com uh, combat. It doesn't look like uh, old Dacian or old Romanian swords, or Turk, Turkish swords, if you want, that was a little curved, long and a little curved, very good in, uh, in middle um, uh, distance combat and long distance combat. When you uh, move that sword around your head, <laughs> I mean, around your body, you could kill maybe <laughs> 10, 15, uh, very many, but it was not useful in close combat. So we are being drawn attention that God wants us to be well equipped with the sword of the spirit, with a message. And we are being told what this is uh, uh, about. The sword of the spirit is the word of God, uttered, preached, communicated, personally, directly. It's not the uh, logos theology, the, the whole message and, and, and rich message, theological message about God's salvation. It's about the testimony that we can bring and uh, communicate to everyone. Would you like to become a Christian? Would you like to live with God? Is that possible? Yes, in my life it was possible. I would like to invite you personally to, to come to God and, and ask Him to work in your life. So this, is, this word is extremely important, especially in, a, in a, a, this type of age, um, postmodernistic age when we are being accused, we are constructing two heavy constructs of uh, theological thinking and everyone has his or her own reality. And we are invited to use the, the sword of the spirit, the word of God, which is a personal testimony about the way he works. So that would be um, the main ideas I like to share with you. Thank you for this opportunity. I. I'm thinking about myself that I really need this arm of God and I feel so much encouraged that I got here a good belt, the belt of truth. I got here a good um, shield, the shield of faith. I got here a good helmet to shield my, my brains, my thinking, my, psycho my psychology. And this is the, the, the helmet of salvation. I got here a very good weapon of testimony, the, the word of God. And... Um, I've got the shoes of uh, the gospel, of being full of zeal to preach the gospel, which give me a very good grip on the ground. And what I wish to myself, I wish to you, and Paul is wishing that to us, that we may win the victory and then stand our ground exactly after we won, when, when we think that would be easier. Maybe it won't, but with God we'll be successful. May God bless you in these difficult times. And may, may he render us successful in our lives and always trusting in his word and his presence. Thank you. Of course, the big command is, is to put them on, right, Tavi? I mean, I mean that's, that's our, our question. Are we gonna, are we gonna put it on or are we gonna let it off, right? That's true. I, for ages, uh, ages, well, many years, <laughs> for many years I thought it's just a nice uh, metaphor, uh, uh, imagery. But uh, going to some uh, difficult personal uh, times at a certain point in my life, I realized that I did it actually to use the helmet of salvation to remind me of God's salvation, uh, of his purposes with, with me in my life. So I used parts of this armor, if not all, but parts of them I really used. I think I, I wore uh, the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation very much. And maybe I use the, the sword of the word. I, I'm not sure how to say so. Well, that was all right. But to actually think about uh, how each part of the armor can, can build us up and strengthen us, uh, it's helpful, helpful thing to think about. I think it's, it's more than imagery. It's, a, it's a, a very realistic equipment, spiritual equipment. Yes, yes. Um, hello, if I may? Yes, yeah, certainly, please. Yes, hi. Yeah. Um, I would just, I would like to, uh, you know, to share the fact that I relate so much uh, when it comes to the helmet of salvation. And especially today, 
because um, yesterday I dropped my daughter to her college. So of course, you know, and uh, it was the uh, first time I only have one daughter, one child. So um, of course, as a mother, I had all these thoughts, if she's going to be, you know, okay there, if she's going to get, you know, all the knowledge that she needs to prepare her for life and good friends. And, um, you know, uh, so uh, yesterday and today, <laughs> all day long, you know, I prayed, you know, and for her and for my thoughts, you know, to be aligned and to give me some peace. So, yes, I do relay very much the helmet of salvation, especially nowadays. <laughs> it was, uh, that was very good. There was a very good parallel. Thank you for sharing. And we'll, we'll remember to pray for your daughter at the end, Danishwara. Thank you very much. These are tender times, we know. Let's switch over now to uh, this uh, uh, project, this uh, Romanian uh, uh, commentary project. I'm going to try and share a screen with you. I'll lead us through much of this, Tavi, but uh, feel free uh, along the way to interject uh, a comment uh, or a thought. Uh, but uh, I thought some of you might want to see some Romanian pictures. So, uh, so we'll do that, okay? Oh, here is our devotional. We already had that. Where is Romania? Hmm. Some of you might not know. Well, you should. There it is. It's in East Europe, okay? Right near uh, Moldova, Hungary, uh, Serbia, Bulgaria, um, a country of 19.23 million people with the primary language being Romanian, the seventh most populated state in the European Union, but one of the least urbanized countries in Europe, and many Christians uh, there are from the Orthodox tradition of the Christian faith. Here's a picture that uh, we had taken. Tommy, do you remember what year this was? I can't remember. I think it was about four or five years ago. Yes, it looks like that. We all were younger. We were younger. <laughs> <laughs> we, had more, we had more hair. <laughs> or at least I had more hair then. But this is uh, at uh, his church, uh, Swint the, uh, the Trimi in uh, Bucharest, Romania, where um, Tavi serves as one of, how many pastors do you have at the church, uh, Tavi? Uh, we have uh, five pastors. Uh, one is retired and he's a sort of um, ordinary pastor, but uh, yes, four pastors who are uh, very active um, uh, in uh, these areas so of uh, pastoral care, Bible studies, um, um, church planting, personal evangelism, and um, children's work. But the church has planted a number of uh, other churches over the years, right? Uh, the church has planted, uh, after 1990, something like 20 other churches. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, at that point, in 1990, the church was uh, 1,300. At the moment, we are 400... Uh, 50 members, almost uh, 500, but uh, three of the churches we've planted, uh, they have uh, 300 or 200 membership, so they are, they're all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. And they're not other are smaller, like 70, 50, something like that. But not only in Bucharest, but also in the surrounding, uh, surrounding area, right? Yes. In the surrounding area, that means the, the greater Bucharest area or the metropolitan area area, something like that. Uh, not further than, uh, oh, something like 15 kilometers, or if you want, 25 miles around Bucharest. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a vibrant place. I've been there uh, several times, and uh, well, this is after uh, one time I preached, and, uh, and Tavi translated for me, and I was so thankful for your translation work, uh, Tavi. Uh, this uh, church, uh, you showed an image of our church, and, and that church was built uh, when I was a, a student there in uh, 81, 86, uh, when the old uh, church building was um, pulled down by um, the dictator Ceausescu. And uh, for one year or two, he didn't allow us to have another church. Finally, they bought a Jewish, a Jewish house. They didn't allow us to modify the, the front uh, wall of the church so this is how the jewish house looked before but everything which is behind the 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 front uh, the main entrance is different it's a huge hall with 
many rooms as well. And this is the uh, Baptist Institute, uh, where Dr. Braban teaches in downtown uh, Bucharest on the Strade uh, Berzi. Um, you'll see that there's a car there in the picture. That's uh, it's right in front of uh, the Baptist Institute. And that's associated with uh, Bucharest State uh, University. Now, let's talk about literature and Romanian literature. And uh, hmm, here's a good uh, text out of Joshua 1.8. And uh, golly, Tommy, would you read this for us? Uh, you, you, would you like me to read it in Romanian? Yes, that would be great. I think everybody would like to hear a little bit of Romanian. Yeah. Okay. Cartea aceasta alegi. Să nu se depărteze de gura ta. Meditează asupra ei zi și noapte, veghind, astfel încât să poți împlini tot ceea ce este scris în ea, căci atunci vei reuși oriunde, vei merge și vei prospera. Ok. Good. So what did he say? Well, see, the, this book of the law, let it not depart from your mouth. <laughs> Meditate uh, on it day and uh, night uh, and watch so that you may fulfill everything it's written in it so that, and then you'll uh, be successful wherever you'll go and you will prosper. Okay, great, super. All right, but everybody else knew that. Well, okay, uh, maybe just Adashwara and uh, Tommy and myself. But uh, it's Joshua 1.8 and it encourages us, of course, to have the scripture on our mind. And of course, when we think of the scripture, having it on our mind, we think of it having it uh, in book form. But the question that I want to uh, uh, pursue the rest of this time is, yep, what happens when there aren't enough of the right books? Okay, what happens when there isn't enough literature? Right, and now I take you to um, uh, Tavi's church in Bucharest, uh, this special place where you hid the Bibles uh, during uh, Ceausescu's time, and Ceausescu is on the right there with uh, his military, and now and then they would come into churches. Uh, uh, might you share anything about this uh, special hiding place uh, for, uh, for the books there? Uh, yes, as you can see there, there is a sound box, uh, and exactly at that uh, height, it, uh, it was a, a place for hiding Bibles. Um, here it's uh, the steps that go to the place where the choir was singing and and uh, there was uh, an organ old organ a church organ there but under the church organ if you just removed all this wooden panel you'll discover a small door that would would lead you into a quite big <laughs> sort of uh, room or little cave and there were stashed lots of Bibles, um, hundreds if not 1,000 or something like that, and uh, they would be used in evangelism. And people would not think uh, that that's the hiding place for the Bible because it was covered with all this wooden um, uh, cover and it was, you thought it's just architecture. And you would hide the Bibles in case, let's say, uh, the police was coming or you knew that there was going to be uh, people coming to the church who might uh, be difficult, right? There were a few uh, Western organizations that would uh, help us bringing the Bible. The Bible was a very looked for uh, book at that time, but was very difficult. Sometimes they were uh, transported down the Danube with uh, some uh, ships, but... Um, if the, the police would find it, uh, sometimes they caught the Bibles and just burn them so, mm -hmm. or, or sink the, uh, sunk the ship. So it was very difficult. Uh, in double wall uh, vans and something like that, um, people uh, help us with uh, transporting Bibles, a Cornelius conversion, uh, because uh, there were many families who really enjoyed and cherished having one Romanian Bible and reading it. So. It was a, a very prized uh, thing to have. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'd like our, uh, those in the Sunday school today just to realize that uh, we haven't had that type of uh, difficulty. Uh, uh, we have so many Bibles and nobody's ever been coming to take the Bibles away from us um, or take other Christian literature away from us. But in communist countries like Romania, uh, they did that. And that changes the entire way that uh, you know, Christian education resources, uh, uh, the distribution of Christian literature, it changes the whole uh, scenario around. Um, 
Um, but you can see how at least they dealt with uh, hiding Bibles here in, uh, in, in Tavi's church. Now, I think I started to realize this uh, when I was in uh, Beush uh, in uh, Western Romania. Um, Andrew and I had, were in uh, Beush, I think it was 2014. Um, I uh, was teaching at a, a Bible college in uh, Aradia, and they asked if I would have a, uh, a message at the one church there in, in, in Beush there. Um, there were a couple hundred people in the church uh, that day, and uh, we uh, service was about an hour and a half long, and then the pastor uh, invited us back for uh, for lunch uh, to his house. And we probably had about 16 of us in this kitchen. Uh, the wife that day had uh, made the freshest turkey I think I've ever had. Um, I mean, it was probably gobbling about eight hours ago. Uh, it, it was great. Uh, it was super. And she home, uh, homemade the schnitzel and, and all that. It was It was super. He, uh, we had a great meal together. And then uh, I was with the pastor downstairs in his basement, and the, the pastor was bi, uh, bilingual. His, his English was pretty good, uh, not nearly as good as, uh, uh, as Tavi's. Um, uh, but he showed me the books that he had to help him as a pastor, and he had four bookshelves, uh, relatively small bookshelves. Three of those bookshelves were English, and one sort of sparsely stocked with a few Romanian books and very uh, little that comes from um, uh, uh, the free church uh, tradition, whether it be Baptist uh, or Pentecostal uh, at all. Um, so you can see there's a very uh, vast difference here that uh, we have between uh, uh, the English speaking world where there's so many resources uh, in comparison to Romania. I brought along a little bit of show and tell here. Um, I uh, have taught uh, the Book of Romans, uh, part of the New Testament. I've taught it for about 10 years while I was overseas. And I, I accumulated uh, some commentary. So here's one by uh, Douglas Moo. Maybe you can see how big and thick it is, uh, written from the 1990s. It's an excellent commentary. Here's uh, a one, one from about 2014, 2015 by Arlen Holtgren, Paul's Letter to the Romans. Once again, it's an excellent, about 400-page commentary. This came out in 2016. This is by Richard Longenecker. Once again, an excellent commentary on the book of Romans. I could probably bring in about four others on my shelf, but I think you get the point. Um, we've got so many of these resources in English, and there are very few when you get to other languages, uh, particularly if you're in uh, countries in East Europe um, or sections of Asia, and they may not have anything uh, at all. Might you want to share a comment uh, at all about that, Tavi? Uh, yes, that's true. Um, the Romanian theological literature was very scarce and uh, very little in, in terms of titles. Uh, and one of the reasons was that uh, we didn't have uh, theologians trained properly in order to make comments. We had some good books at a personal and popular level. And of course, some commentaries, um, Orthodox or Catholic, but Orthodox and Catholic uh, teachers uh, in Romania in the communist times and even before, uh, they don't think very much about um, commenting the word of God. They, they believe more in uh, quoting the church fathers. So <laughs> actually there was no, no literature that would help you to understand the word of God. So uh, of course this, uh, uh, we resented this very much and uh, only in recent times uh, and even not now because uh, people started to write but even now people are maybe more attracted to enter some debates, uh, write great books on, I don't know, charismatic gifts or something. But <laughs> they are not properly <laughs> and uh, humbly following the word of God in a way that could help us. There are very few who do this thing, maybe one or two. Yeah. It's not probably very attractive. It's hard work and you need to be humble and we need good commentaries. Yeah. So, so that's really the birth of this this project and we realized that uh, Tavi and myself and uh, several others uh, have this on our, our hearts as well, and hence this uh, commentary series is formed. Um, we realize that there's the power of the printed page, um, 
that has a way of being able to spread and to um, uh, be a help uh, for uh, churches and uh, for uh, countries. Um, sharing uh, the printed word is very cost effective. It doesn't compromise and it can be made to interact with uh, the context of, uh, of the country or the culture. I've already mentioned uh, the lack of biblical resources in the South and the East. Um, from a mission standpoint, uh, the mission of the church, most Christian literature is written in English, Spanish, French, and German. And when you get out of these uh, uh, main languages, uh, we find um, uh, many, many fewer resources or fewer resources uh, available. So here's the committee uh, through the years. Uh, uh, there are a few others uh, involved with it, but I think the first one's 2016. I'm not sure. I think that's right, Tavi. And then uh, 2018, uh, uh, I'll tell you who some of these gentlemen are. Um, let's take the picture from 2018. The man with the, uh, the blue uh, sweater is uh, Daniel Estrada. Some of you might be uh, interested to know that uh, he's also an American missionary. He's a pastor uh, in uh, the Carpathian Mountains in, uh, in, uh, near Bucharest. And uh, Daniel was also supported uh, through Emmanuel Leidy's church, which became my first contact uh, with Daniel uh, uh, just a few years ago. And he's part of this community, uh, committee. You see Tavi next and myself, then uh, Cornelio Constanano, who's uh, uh, rector at the University of Arad uh, in uh, uh, the western part of Romania. Then Amiel Drimba, who's uh, another New Testament prof at uh, the Baptist Institute in Bucharest. Um, then Ciprian Tarenta, who's um, at uh, the Pentecostal School in uh, Bucharest. And then uh, Emmanuel Kansak, uh, who's also from uh, the Pentecostal School in Bucharest. Anything you want to add to, to the committee at all, uh, Tavi? Uh, there were a few others who are not in the picture. Some of them are completing their PhD in, uh, in uh, Norway, uh, Romanians. And uh, like Bogdan Costa, who, one who had um, a student of Drake who had the idea of uh, writing and thinking about commentaries in uh, Romanian. And uh, yes, uh, in the first picture we, we got here, um, uh, at the back, the second row to the right, um, the principal of the Baptist Theological Institute. And uh, next to him the, uh, is the um, present day um, uh, vice dean of the, of the college. So they are very involved uh, with the Baptist College in Bucharest. Thank you. Let's tell you about it, uh, what each um, uh, commentary has within it. It interacts with the Romanian versions of the Bible that will be most read in the Protestant uh, tradition. Um, we're working with uh, Editia Dumitriu uh, Cornelisco uh, Revisuata. Did I pronounce that right, Tavi? Probably not. Revisuita. Revisuita. Revisuita, yes. Uh, the Cornelisco Bible is the equivalent of the King James um, in uh, Romanian, but the, uh, this revised version would be, uh, well, it's revised as of 2019. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's uh, gone into that. So we uh, combine that uh, also with the consideration of the Noa Traducere in Limba Romana, which is from 2006, um, translation that came out of Western uh, Romania. And those are the two versions that we interact with. But we also interact with the Greek and the Hebrew language uh, because uh, Greek and Hebrew is always the source language and we should go uh, back to the sources. It also interacts with the church fathers uh, since it's important for those in the Orthodox context uh, uh, so we uh, uh, refer to uh, church fathers along the way, and then we provide a practical application in a Romanian context. Oh, a note on this uh, church here on the right. This is the St. Stephen uh, 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 Orthodox Church, also known as the Church from the Stork's Nest. Do you want to say something about that, Tommy? Yes. Uh, you mentioned the Cornelescu Bible, and uh, it was uh, finished first in uh, 1921. Her first version, his first version, and um, the translator Cornelescu was a, a deacon here at this little church. And actually, you can't see in this picture, but exactly to the right side uh, is the Baptist Seminary. <laughs> so it's a great place for the Baptist Seminary to be, although the Baptist Seminary started something like 10 or 15 years later. Anyway, uh, when Cornelescu started his uh, translation of the Bible, 
and started to preach together with his main priest at the at the place. Um, there was the first and very interesting huge revival in the Orthodox Romanian Church here. The church, this church is famous actually. The first Romanian re, uh, revival in the Orthodox. And out of this revival started two semi-Orthodox, semi-evangelical uh, denominations, Vastea Domnului, the Lord's Army, and um, the Romanian Evangelical uh, Christians, which is something else than brethren, uh, but uh, related to them. So uh, actually the Baptist Seminary is next to a great church here at the beginning of the last century in 19... Uh, 12, 19, 20 something, it was a great revival here, starting with the preaching of the word. This is how the priest here, Tudor Popescu, had only six elderly ladies who would come to the church every Sunday or Friday. At a certain point, he said, what could I do? And he started to preach the gospel and then the church was filled. Now you see it's surrounded by blocks. It was not surrounded by blocks. It was the main point in that street interse intersection, but Ceausescu covered uh, its face. You cannot see it from outside. The, the main intersection is beyond the blocks. Uh, Ceausescu did that with many Orthodox churches, surrounding them with buildings so that they may uh, not be seen from outside. But that's the way I think that's a point and a major place where God started to to visit our nation. How's the project coming along? Well, uh, Dr. Baban and I have written uh, on Ephesians. We have that uh, uh, virtually completed, although we're doing a few edits on that. But now we're uh, taking on uh, a larger uh, book, uh, the Gospel of Luke. And I'm a couple chapters through on my part, and uh, Dr. Baban is as well. Um, we have a colleague who's working on First and Second Thessalonians, uh, and is a long ways uh, through First Thessalonians. I'm not sure where he is on Second Thessalonians. But when these uh, three volumes are completed, uh, we can take it to, to print as a series, and then the goal would be to add on a, a book or two after that. So the, the, the big milestone is to get three finished uh, commentaries, and, and we're well on the way to that. Otherwise, we have a few other volumes that have been assigned out there, uh, John, Gospel of John, uh, Letter to the Romans, uh, as well as the Epistle of James. We're going to translate the Ephesians commentary and place it into English. Uh, so that might be a help for those of you who are interested in this series to know what's going on. Uh, well, you don't have to read it in Romanian and say, oh, uh, those who know Romanian say it's like this. So you can see it and see it actually in English. And then we anticipate having a website uh, available for this uh, in the future. How about an example? Well, we'll try and go through this uh, quickly. In fact, uh, I mean, I can give my example, uh, Octavian, but uh, do you have some things you might want to say about Ephesians 6, 13 through 17 uh, that you didn't share in your devotional earlier? Since uh, we might, I want to leave enough time for uh, uh, questions and answers. Maybe I'll skip mine and let you. No, no, you, you do your presentation. I just presented one page of, of that commentary just at the beginning. Oh, okay. Okay, well, I'm not sure, share mine with you. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh my. So uh, some of you are already scared already. I've, I've shown you this is Greek on the screen. Gasp, moan. Oh, now don't worry. Uh, I can show you a few words in here and how it can make a, a difference for understanding a verse or two that you probably know very well. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 in the ESV, English Standard Version, reads like this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and, it is not, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Now, the next line down is Greek. Oh, groan. Oh, but we can do this. We can do this. You don't have to know Greek if you can just follow a few underlined words here. Let's start with the bottom two underlined uh, words. This is in the second line. Uk ex humon, which means not from you. Do you see how that's repeated two times? Uk ex humon, not from you. And then uh, a few words, and then it, it's again, uk ex humon, not from you. Do you see how that two repetitions there tell us, where does salvation come from? Not from you, right? It's through some other way. Now let's go back to the 
first part of the sentence. Te gar karite. Hmm, karite almost sounds like Karen. Uh, oh, we have a Karen with us. Uh, uh, means grace, right? For by grace, you have been saved. So it's not from you, but rather it is te karite. It's by grace that one has been saved. And if we go back to the original language, it's very clear where salvation comes from. The original source in salvation is through grace, and it's not from you. Hmm. By going back to the original helps to emphasize that. Now I'm going to go over to the next screen here, and then I'm going to flip back to the other one. You've got a little bit of Romanian here. Only a few of us know Romanian, but you know well enough that you can compare words and see it's a little bit different just in the first few words. Kach prin har, then in the top one, suntets mantuitsi, all right, is different than kach prin har ats fost mantuitsi, right? What's the difference there? Hmm, well, translated, right? For through grace, you are saved in the top version. The bottom one, kach prin har ats fost mantuitsi. You have been saved. Hmm, what's going on here? Why did both versions take it differently? Well, the point actually is found in the Greek text, the words underneath, este ses omenoi. Ses omenoi is a perfect tense verb. And in the Greek tense, it tells you something that you won't find in the English, you won't find in the Romanian. It's an action that has taken place in the past with ongoing ramifications in the present time. We don't have that in English where we're just left with the past. This tells us something's happened and there's a result that still continues going on. Both translations end up being right then. You are being saved and then you have been saved, the EDCR and the NTR, but it's through a pregnant expression in the Greek tense, estes that tells you both. You have been and you are being saved. But it's all through grace alone and not from yourself. Now, let's add in a church father, which this commentary series does. We'll add in John Chrysostom, who's known as the Golden Mouth. He is a, a great preacher in the early church, and he particularly loved the Pauline uh, uh, epistles, and he has some very uh, clever things to say. And this is what he says about Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved, you know, a little old English here, this translator. For by grace are ye saved, saith he, Paul, by faith. Then in such a way as not to harm the free will, he assigns us a new role. After which he takes it again, saying that it is not our contribution either. Even faith, he says, is not from us. For if the Lord had not come, if he had not called us, how could we believe? As he says, will they believe if they have not heard? So even the act of faith is not self-initiated. It is, he says, the gift of God. Okay. Well, the Greek brings this out. It's found in the Romanian, but it's emphasized even more by this um, uh, church father who has been loved, who is uh, deeply loved in the East and has value for us in the West too. Um, where does faith, where does our whole Christian experience come from? It's by grace alone. Some devotional uh, application? Well, hmm, there is some Romanian legalism, which maybe my colleague will share about uh, in a moment, uh, but the emphasis of the verse is on grace. We should be thankful for what we have, rather than looking to our own works, how good we are, how great it is, instead to look to what God has done. And faith functions merely as a reception to God's grace. Any word you want to add about Romanian legalism at all, uh, 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 Tavi? Uh, it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we are not very aware of it. <laughs> That's the problem with legalism because uh, uh, often it uh, goes or passes for spiritual spiritualism and uh, actually it's not. Uh, it's just a way of living by rules and maybe too many rules. I remember one application of... Uh, of Drake in one of his sermons in our church, Holy Trinity in Bucharest, and he said, 
I'm not sure what he said. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, combining his insights with somebody else, I think that, uh, anyway, uh, some Pentecostals would think that you get to heaven if you speak in tongues. Some brethren would think that uh, you get to heaven if you believe in um, the um, different uh, um, periods of history their theology speak about. And uh, some Baptists would think uh, that they would get to heaven if they go to church. Uh, every Sunday and every day, uh, as uh, often as they have the option. So um, this might be true. But yes, we tend to be legalistic uh, uh, for forgetting that we have been saved by grace and it's God's doing. And whenever we uh, realize this again, uh, we praise God and uh, then we become more charismatic in the sense of by grace. It's all grace. It's all grace indeed. Tommy, I'm going to uh, just bring us to the conclusion here, unless you have something you want to add on Ephesians 6, 16, and 17 due to the... the... I, I went through, and I think that everybody knows quite well the arm of God in Ephesians. I just presented uh, the things. Uh, it will make uh, good reading to go again. <laughs> uh, but I, I really don't why because I want to uh, do it because we already went through okay. the applications. Great. Great. Okay. Then let's uh, just say how we are applying this. Uh, uh, Tavi and I... Uh, 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 I've applied this to uh, in the Baptist Institute, where this is the, the class that um, I was just working with this last uh, February, right before the coronavirus um, uh, restrictions uh, shut, um, uh, shut so many things down. But uh, what did we do? We went through Ephesians and uh, quoted uh, sections of this commentary during the class, and the students were able to interact with it. Um, um, so this was uh, the, uh, the class in February. And I envision we'll probably do this with uh, other uh, writings that we do as well. And we continue on with this project, not only with the support of uh, Central Schwenkfelder Church, but with uh, Dr. Daniel Marsh, uh, who's uh, pictured on the right in this picture, uh, the rector of the Baptist Institute, as well as uh, the European Christian Mission, uh, which we've supported uh, for a number of years through the church. And the director there is Vincent Price. I have, I have one question, and this is uh, using uh, your... Um talk on uh, spiritual armor. When you mentioned the difference between the uh, Orthodox uh, interpretation and dealing a lot more with the, the church fathers, uh, outside of that, would they interpret uh, the spiritual armor uh, in a different way? Uh, I'm just curious about that. No, 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 I don't think so. Uh, what I meant is that uh, they do not uh, do uh, lot of reading of the scripture or a lot of discussion about the meaning of the scripture they uh, their comments uh, or commentaries end very easily and soon with quotations from the fathers of the church who said that or said that and very uh, shortly go to liturgy liturgical applications um, which is not entirely uh, a bad thing but uh, it's not uh, letting you interact personally and apply the word of God into your life. So this is what I meant. But uh, generally speaking, they, as well as us, would need to read more about this arm of God and use it in our lives. Another question or comment? Yeah, I had a question. So when you were showing the pictures um, and there was the picture of the church and you were saying there was an area that used to hide Bibles, does that mean there was a period in, in your history where you were allowed to meet at church? You just weren't allowed to have a Bible? Uh, we were allowed to meet at the church during the communist uh, regime. What we were not allowed and... Um, we needed to fight in prayer and have special meetings with the president was, for example, we were not allowed to have children's work or Sunday school. We are not allowed to have Sunday evening meetings. We are not allowed to have youth uh, Bible studies, anything that would prepare the next generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were not uh, allowed to share our faith. The general um, 
advice of the communists was keep your faith uh, for your inner spiritual life, in your, for your rooms, for your flat, for your own family. Actually, it was a sort of um, restricted and uh, so much personalized spirituality that you will never be able to share anything because you will uh, be accused immediately of propaganda, uh, of bringing ideas that would create adepts and uh, will go against the state policies. Uh, so yes, we had churches. We were allowed uh, mainly to meet uh, in the morning. It was a great uh, uh, struggle until in the 70s, we've uh, been granted the right to meet uh, on Sunday evening as well. And we have youth ministry and the children uh, Sunday school. And uh, the Bibles were very few. I mean, if you would have catechesis or somebody would turn to Christ, uh, it would be difficult to say, read the Bible for yourself. You will need first to get a Bible and then to read it for yourself. So almost uh, for anybody who would become a Christian at, at the day uh, of their baptism, uh, receiving a Bible would be a, one of the greatest gifts. You could go to jail for having Bibles because it was, uh, um, especially for having Bibles who were printed in the West uh, and did not have uh, the the stamp printed in Bucharest, uh, the Orthodox uh, Archbishop or something. Uh, so this is why uh, even the uh, United Bible Societies in London uh, would not say where they printed the Bible. There are lots of uh, Bibles in Romanian, none said where it was printed. So it was just Bible in Romania. That's, that's it. And when was Ceausescu removed? Was that the 80s or 70s? or? Uh, in 89, where it was a, a, a great uh, move uh, started actually by Gorbachev and President Reagan uh, to change the face, the political face of Eastern Europe. They too uh, came to a conclusion that uh, uh, the communist regime cannot uh, continue in these countries. Uh, Russia is not able, Soviet Union was not able to sustain uh, these countries and this uh, specific regime. So they, uh, they uh, accepted to re re rearrange things. Uh, but this is a political issue. I would love to discuss it. But uh, so half was the merit of the people in, uh, within these countries fighting for their freedom, but half was. Uh, the result of an agreement that was across the nations at an international level. Another comment or question before we uh, close in prayer? I was going to ask a related question as to what role the church had in that change. I mean, clearly you said it was a political thing, but was there a role that the church played in that, in that change? Yes, I think it was. Uh, the church had to... <laughs> Uh, two main directions. We had people who openly uh, disagreed with the communist regime, and especially that was evident in the 80s when they asked uh, everybody to uh, swear an oath of allegiance to the communist party and uh, Christians, not all, but like something like 80 percent in uh, leading positions in their factories or institutes. They um, uh, rejected the suggestion and they lost their position or the leadership position. Uh, another thing was that uh, from a broadcast station like um, Voice of America or Radio, Radio Free Europe or Transworld, uh, Transworld Radio, there were lots of uh, Christian messages that would go um, to Romania and uh, they proclaimed the gospel but also they criticized the system as well. And uh, there were some uh, some uh, figures like Joseph Tson and others who were political refugees in the West uh, who testified against the communist regime. But that was difficult because there were others who testified uh, in favor of the communist regime. So it was like Romanians were not having uh, one mind about it. Uh, but Richard Wurbrandt, he was a Jew uh, who lived in Romania, who was a Romanian um, citizen, and became, he was communist at the beginning, uh, was educated in Moscow, and then he became Christian. And he was in prison in Romania for 14 years, if I'm not wrong. 
uh, and uh, when he became Christian, he came to you in, a, in the United States, and you, you know he became famous because uh, he was participating, uh, watching actually somewhere in New York or Chicago, I can't remember very well now, a great meeting uh, in favor of uh, freedom in the communist uh, countries. And uh, the speakers, Americans or Eastern Europeans, they were saying that everybody is quite all right. And he said, I don't think so. And he uh, pulled his shirt out. <laughs> if you remember, he went on the stage, pulled his uh, shirt out and people could see the beatings marks on his, on his back. And he said, I don't think this is all right. I just came from there. I, I was 14 years in, in prison. So, and he was a great Lutheran pastor. Uh, and he was an acquaintance of my family as well. And um, I think that this kind of uh, attitude so, and uh, a good preaching from our side was the contribution of the, of the uh, Romanian churches, not only Baptists, but all evangelicals. So good spiritual testimony and some act, uh, um, political action, yet it was easier to have it, uh, to express it abroad, not in Romania, because you could die very easily in a special way, secret way. Nobody would know why. There were uh, accidents that happened to uh, pastors, uh, Baptist pastors or Pentecostals, because they raised their voices against the regime. So mm, there was a car, the, 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 the driver left, uh, hit you, you died, nobody knew, maybe you were uh, uh, the guilty part. Uh, so uh, there was a position, but not so great in uh, within Romania, or if it was great, then you risked also uh, great effects. Wow, thanks for that. Uh, and the story about Richard Wormbrand, uh, you can find on, uh, I think it's on Amazon Prime right now, um, uh, the, the film itself is uh, it's accessible. M most of you probably can access that uh, film. I'm going to type out uh, in the chat section uh, the name uh, of of the man we're talking about, Richard Wormbrand. Yeah, he was a Romanian Jew uh, who was educated in Moscow, worked for the Communist Party, turned to Christ, became became Lutheran pastor and was very, very influential in Romania. And he even spoke here in the States uh, during that time. Uh, Richard, Wur Richard Wurmbrand is the name. So I encourage you to, to, uh, to view that. Drake? Yes. Um, just uh, to point out that uh, Vision Video across the fields yes. in Worcester yes. has two versions. They have an animated version and uh, they have a, uh, I guess an acted version, and uh, those are available through the Vision Video website. Okay, okay. No, I, I, I didn't realize that. Thank you for saying so, Barry. Yeah. Well, I think we probably should uh, wrap things up here. But before I do, I want to say, Mozumesk, uh, 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 Dr. Octavian Baban, uh, uh, been through. Uh, oh, Kelly joining us today. I don't know how to say that, but <laughs> thank you very much, Tavi. We're very glad that you joined us. <laughs> We're uh, so pleased. Drake, pentru invitația. A fost foarte bine să fiu cu voi. Thank you, Drake, for the invitation. It was very good to be with yeah, you all. Very great to have you. Greetings to the whole church. Mm -hmm. Certainly. I'm going to have my wife uh, close us uh, in prayer and um, well, then, if uh, people can feel free to go, if you want to linger, uh, Andrew and I will, will remain on for, for just a few more minutes. So, but uh, I have Andrew close us in prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom that we have, that we so often take for granted to gather uh, at this time remotely, but normally in person. Um, pray that you would help us to be grateful for the many things that we have that we don't even realize uh, that other people do not have. We thank you for this glimpse of our brothers and sisters around the world in Romania and what some of their needs are. We thank you for the men and women that you have raised up to help to address these needs. And we pray for your blessing on this project that you would bless all those who are engaged in writing and researching right now that your hand would be on them that you would help them to be fruitful that their work would come quickly and that the first installment could be published soon we thank you for tavi and daniela and their family 
for the work that they have done and continue to do in your church in Romania and pray your richest blessing on them, that many would benefit from their ministry and that you would continue to raise up um, a body of young men and women to go out and proclaim your word um, faithfully and truthfully throughout this land. And we know that Romanians reside in many places around the world and pray that many would turn to Christ and go um, from where they are and proclaim your word as well. Thank you for these things. Uh, we also want to remember Anna Shwara and um, are so pleased that she joined us this morning and pray that you would be with her at this very tender time of sending her daughter to school. And um, we know what that feels like. And we ask for your special embracing of her during this time and that you would give her peace and that you would work out everything in her daughter's life that she needs and that you would give her peace as well. Father, we also remember Timothy who's with us this morning and his wife and bless these dear ones, Lord. Pray that you would encourage them this day that you would help them to know that you are with them and you are giving them everything that they need. Help them to know that we love them and we stand with them. Thank you, Father, for your grace in our lives. And we um, just give the rest of this day to you and ask that you would be glorified. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.